Welcome back. We're doing leadership conversations, talking to different leaders around the world. I'm getting their perspective, distinctives on different issues. And I'm so glad to be back in Singapore at my home church, City Harvest Church Singapore, with uh, my hero in the faith, Pastor Kong. And uh, I came here when I was about, I think, 21 and uh, in 1995 Christmas. And then uh, the Lord spoke to me and you invited me to come on and uh, took me into your home. And so live with you and son for six months and became a son and, uh, you know, and, and, and came into the family. That time we were only about 1,500 people. And I remember that year you had a vision from the Lord when you went to Hawaii and came back. And that church, the year we saw the church double and uh, just was in the midst of a great revival. And so, so honored to have you here. And, you know, sometimes in America we see, you know, the churches and we see those that are Christian television and we hear different ones. <laughs> but we don't realize God's moving all over the world. And, you know, to me, I'm biased, but I think this is one of the greatest churches in the world. Uh, you know, the church here uh, had a median age of between 22 to 24, first time, first church converts, 74%. And so just amazing reaching the loss and, uh, you know, the passion for the loss, the passion for God. I've inherited that and, you know, we're doing it now in America. And so I thought it's good that we just hear the, the City Harvest story and uh, from you, the founder, you're the best one to tell it. I, I've told a little bit of it. And, uh, you know, the, the principles are timeless that God does it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, someone once said this, that everything God does is according to a principle, a pattern in his word. Yeah. If we can look and see that, we can apply it in any nation mm -hmm. and uh, we can see the mm -hmm. same results. So thank you, Pastor, for being here with us and uh, taking time to share with us. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Derek. Um, it's a great joy to see what God is doing in California under your ministry. And I just thank God I have a chance, uh, the privilege to be along the way to help you to become who you are today. A man of God, I'm so proud of you. We are friends, not just for life, but for all eternity. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Well, how did we start the church? I grew up in a small little congregation, uh, Episcopalian church, and uh, I served as the janitor. I served as a youth leader in church of evangelism, and I was involved in church planting. By 1989, I was 25 years old, and I was in the Philippines. I thought I was going to die in the Philippines as a missionary. <laughs> and I'm going to give my life there for, to serve the Lord. Uh, and then the Lord spoke to me and said, Kong, I want you to go back to Singapore because out of this church, I'm going to raise up a generation that will take Asia by storm. Yeah. So I came back and on May the 7th, 1989, we had our first service and it was, has just been an amazing journey and God has been so good to us. We grew, we, you were with us from 1980 from 1995, and we have seen revival from uh, 800 to 1500, 3000, 7000, 10,000. By 2009, we were averaging 400 new decisions every week. We had about 32,000 uh, members in our church, and it was just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. And I remember the times when we went to Jerome West and we were running nine services. It was like Groundhog Day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> but in every service, the presence of God was there. In every yeah. service, you know, we try to sit in the praise and worship as much as possible and be there. Yeah. And just seeing people so hungry yeah. um, for the move of God. You know, in, yeah. in one of the sessions, we were talking to Pastor Mark, and he was sharing about he was 16 years old. Right. And was there in that part of that initial group when you came back from the Philippines and he was there. And, you know, 16 years old, making a stand for Jesus and just so hungry right. for the presence of God. Yeah. You know, so I know our mission statement is you know, to raise up a, a church with a strong spiritual atmosphere of faith and purity at that time. Right. Where everyone's releasing a ministry, uh, discipled in the great commandment to fulfill the great commission. Yes. And that was there. But what was the draw? What was the key? Of course, people look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that time, we didn't have all the facilities that we have now and things God had blessed us up. Mm -hmm. But what was the key to attract young people? Because some people are looking now and they're like, all the millennials, and how do we reach them? What, what do you feel was the, some of the principles or keys that God gave you uh, looking back? You know, of course, we could talk about programs, we could talk about events, but if you ask me for one key, mm. I must say it's the Holy Spirit. Mm. From day one, we are spirit-filled people, baptized in the Spirit. We, we just love the Holy Spirit, His presence, His power, and uh, every single meeting, is the presence is so tangible, hearts begin to melt. Mm. Tears will flow down their eyes. You don't need to convince them that God is real. Yeah. You know, by the time I'm ready to give an order call, people are, were weeping. And it's so easy to get people saved. But getting saved is one thing. <laughs> Making them come back to church again and again is another. But that's the power of the Spirit. Yeah. 
it draws the hearts of, of the congregation towards God. And we prayed, we worship. And on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, one of the first things that happened was that young men would see vision and old men would dream dreams. Mm. Visions and dreams are very big in City Harvest Church. We have a big vision to see the whole of Singapore and the whole of Asia just coming to Christ. Yeah. And you know, over the years, Singapore is just a tiny country, maybe about 5.8 million people. And we have a little over a million Christians, but about a third of them probably we have been saved through our ministry in City Harvest. They may not be in our church, but I'm pretty sure you go to most churches in Singapore, there'll be somebody there that responded to Christ through one of our ministries in those years. So it's a tremendous privilege. So the key to, to the secret to the success, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I mean, the Bible says, taste and see the Lord is good. Right. And so when people come in, and even that time of young people, I think, you know, um, 16 year olds, it was people secondary yeah. school coming in yeah. who maybe are still being educated, but their hearts were knit. And, and right. first generation Christians, a lot of them, you know, during that time, parents would show up angry and, uh, but we would train them, and I know you would teach, go back, honor your parents, clean the house, have a good <laughs> attitude. Yeah. And out of that testimony, many of their parents now yeah. came, and I know we started the Chinese church, you know, kind of jumping ahead, and, and the parents are now saved and in yeah. church. So it's, it was really changing a generation, not just building yeah. a church. Yeah. Um, but back to the presence of God, like how, what are, you know, for people out there looking and they look at that and there's different models out there. When you talk about bringing the presence of God, like how, how do you build that? I mean, people are saying, I want to, I want to see the presence of God. I want to experience God and let him show up. How, what in your mind, and I know with you and Son, she's a worshiper and, you know, was very involved yeah. in worship, especially at that time. Yeah. What, what, were, what were you thinking when you did that and how did you approach mm. church and doing ministry? I think that, you know, beyond all the skills and all the outward external trappings, I think the most important thing is that God is looking for a willing heart. Mm. So we always say over here that he's not looking for golden vessels or silver vessels, yeah. but a yielded vessels. And the beautiful thing here is this, God has a, a special plan for every church, mm. for every ministry. God has a special plan for me. God has a special plan for you, Pastor Derek. Yeah. And you got to find that blueprint. Mm. And that means that you need to, to spend time with the Lord. I mean, I know I, I, it's important to attend seminars and conferences and learn from the best. Yeah and you learn all the techniques, all the, all the stuff, you know? But I think beyond that, God has a special calling, mm. a special vision, and it's up to you to search it out. The Bible says that it's the wisdom of God to conceal a matter, but, mm. it's, but it's, the, it's the wisdom of the leader to search it out. Yeah. And if you have a calling, you need to search it out. And I spend time together with my wife's son, on our knees, crying out to God in those years yeah. when we had nothing. Yeah. God, tell us what you want us to do. Mm. And it's a beautiful thing. It's the whole journey, you know. Yeah. I'm, you don't need to know everything and He seldom tells you everything. Yeah. But all you need to know is just the next step and the next step. And each time you obey, His, his pleasure, His favor will show up. Wow, and that's beautiful. exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and every time we met, and you were there in those years, yeah even before the first song is, is sung, yeah. the presence of God yeah. could be felt. Yeah. And it's, it's the presence, the power that attracted young and old to come and open up their hearts to receive Christ. Yeah, and, and you know, I I'm, was reminded back as you were talking those days and even just small group of us as leaders praying with just a guitar. Right. Prayer was such a big part of yeah. it. And you know, now with social media, we look at the big churches and everything, we're like, <laughs> let's imitate them or take that on. But you know, as you mentioned, we all have a distinctive yeah. We can learn from others. But mm -hmm. at that time, we didn't have all that. There was no Christian television yeah. here, you know. But you just sought the Lord and, mm -hmm. and God gave you the blueprint yeah. and, and the heart um, for that. So worship was such a big part of it. And I think it still is today. Yeah. Worship, prayer, fasting, yeah. reading the Bible, you know, uh, all the spiritual disciplines, mm -hmm. they are important. Mm -hmm. But, you know, ultimately, they are all vehicles to bring us closer to God. Mm. I think ultimately we must have a real and present relationship mm. with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm. And uh, when we have that relationship, when we are clear what He wants us to do, 
and we are willing to obey, miracles happen. I mean, Pastor, I've known you for so many years. You're still so passionate for the Lord. You know, we can get caught up in disciplines and they become a routine. Correct. <laughs> and, and there's no power in that. But how do you keep the passion? How do you, after all these years, all you've been through, you know, and, and serving, the church just celebrated 30 over years. 33 years. 33 years, yeah. you know, and, and still going strong, still remaining passionate for reaching young people and all of that. How do you keep that path so it doesn't become a religious routine? Because, I mean, there's people that fast and pray, but they don't have power. There's yeah. people that worship, but they're not really connecting with God. You know, we all have worship services, but God's in some places and not. How, how do you keep that path and then keep it in the lives of people? Yeah. The biggest motivator in life is love. Mm. The greatest is love, mm. right? Yeah. I think that sometimes we can be so busy yeah. with all our uh, religious things yeah. and we lose sight of the fact that God wants to love us mm. and want us to enjoy a loving relationship with Him. Mm. So the older I get, mm. the more I want to experience the love of God and to walk in that love. Mm. Really, when you talk about Christ-likeness, when you talk about everything that God is doing, everything is rooted and born out of love. Mm. Love is the biggest motivator. It, it, and one of the things that I learned over the years is that the Holy Spirit, again, I get back to the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, he is the spirit of love. Mm. He is the communion mm. or he's the bond of love mm. to link us up to God and with one another. Mm. When the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit, you will never lose the passion. Wow. You never lose the fire. You don't have to do anything because uh, you have to, but because you love to. Mm. I guess I'm at an age, at a place in the ministry right now. Uh, I don't want to do the things I have to, but I'm always motivated to do the things I love to. Mm, mm. And that's what keeps the passion going. Mm. If we can know the Holy Spirit as a person, he was Jesus' best friend. And Jesus committed his best friend to us, yeah. to be our best friend. Wow, beautiful. You know, yeah. my wife is my best friend on this earth as a person, but in my life, I like the, the Holy Spirit to be my best friend. Mm. My, you know, Dr. Cho always said this, Dr. Cho, the pastor of the world's largest church. Yeah. He said, I, I know the Holy Spirit more than I know my wife. That is my goal. Wow. I want to, wow. Know, I want to know the Holy Spirit more than I know son. I know son a lot, <laughs> but I want to know the Holy Spirit more. And the more you know him, the more you love him. Yeah. The more you, you, you love God, the more you want to serve mm -hmm. Him, right? Yeah. The fire will never run out. The oil mm -hmm. will never run dry. Mm -hmm. So it's an exciting journey. And it doesn't end in this, this lifetime. Yeah. And in eternity, it's going to be even greater. Yeah. We're going to love God forever and ever. Yeah. We're going to be consumed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, we're going to be swallowed up by that love, mm. by that life, mm -mm -mm. by that presence and that power. Mm. I can't wait for that to happen. Yeah, beautiful. You can sense your love, Pastor. I, I'm <laughs> always motivated. You know, we, we, everything that we do is love. The Bible says if we're doing everything, you can move in gifts and power, but if you have not love, we're just making noise. Yeah. And uh, so I know you're being blessed by this session. We're gonna continue uh, the conversation with Pastor Kong and it's gonna get even better. I know we've been blessed so far. But uh, share this with somebody. Go ahead and like our, our, our page, our YouTube page. Share this with somebody so they can be blessed too. Come on, God's moving all around the world. We need to learn and be motivated for love. So many people don't have what we have in America and uh, they don't have all the tools that we have and things like that. But it's not about all that. All those things, there's nothing wrong with it. But come on, it's passion and the love for God. We'll see you in the next episode.